Welcome to Anders Borg. It's uh, Friday and we're always happy to have you in our offices on Friday and uh, always glad to grab you for a few minutes to discuss the, the week's current events. And uh, this week we had some numbers from the IMF coming in. We had uh, a saying that global recovery remains slow, 2.9% uh, growth for 2024. And for uh, advanced economies, that was 1.4% and for emerging economies, 4.0%. Your comments on that? Well, uh, I, I do think that the IMF left the forecast mainly unchanged. Um, it means that we have a fairly mediocre 23 and, and 24. Global growth is subdued. Um, if you look at the forecast for the US and, and Europe, they, they push the US a bit upwards for next year. But on the overall, we have growth for 24 between one to one and a half percent. So not really strong growth. Um, there was also an adjustment on the inflation forecast, so they increased it somewhat for 24. If you take it from a monetary policy stance, um, inflation for the next 12 to 24 months is most important. Uh, so we're going to see inflation in, in um, some economies remaining close to 3% at least early 24 and then gradually coming down to 2% in, in 25. So um, I think the IMF forecast and what they also signaled is that they, they think that the central banks will have to be fairly cautious when they start to cut rates um, later in 24 to really anchor um, low inflation uh, in, in the medium term. So a little bit I would say that uh, the IMF forecast is kind of uh, supporting the scenario where interest rates stays a little bit higher for a little bit longer. We also had some uh, inflation numbers coming. We had uh, the US was uh, unchanged from August. Uh, Nordics were significantly lower, uh, even if Sweden came a little bit higher than uh, expected today. Um, your, your thoughts around that, where does that leave the equity respective bond markets? So I think that the US inflation number was not very constructive. It, it was a little bit of negative surprises on, on energy and also some parts of, of the service sector. So in the US, we really need to see the, the labor market, market continue to slow down and, and wage increases to, to continue downwards, while productivity remains uh, at least a little bit better than over the last decade or so. Uh, so the next non-farm payroll number will be, be very important for the market. We, we need to see the labor market coming into a, to a more moderate pace of, of growth. Um, I think Fed now is in a situation where they can um, stay on hold. Um, market rates have come up, so monetary conditioning are, are a bit tighter. Um, hopefully they can, at least as I see it, uh, cut rates at the second half of 24. And, and that would provide a bit of support for the markets. But the next couple of months, I think we, we should expect Fed, Fed to be on hold while keeping to a fairly hawkish communication stance. One should probably also mention the fact that we had very low inflation numbers in, in China. Um, th that's obviously constructive for, for growth in Asia. And as you mentioned, IMF is, is more optimistic about Asia. So we have this divided a scenario where the advanced countries are fairly slow while, while uh, emerging markets are, are growing further. Mm -hmm. To my mind, it would be very logical if, if the, the, the PBOC, the central bank in China, would, would cut rates because that would kind of give a little bit of support for growth and probably also mean that the RMB could, could uh, become slightly weaker and, and give a bit of support for, for Chinese export. And, and that in turn would probably imply that, that they continue to export deflation. So that would be kind of a positive global factor. So, so much stronger growth in Asia while uh, inflation remaining fairly low. Mm -hmm. And um, this uh, past weekend we saw uh, terrible attacks on, uh, on Israel and uh, the subsequent military action that has been uh, taking place uh, this week. Uh, it's a very complex, add a lot of, adds a lot of complexity to, to the region. What, uh, what's your thoughts on that? Well, I, I think from a, a global market perspective, the, 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 the most important factor is whether this has an impact on oil prices. Mm -hmm. The initial reaction was fairly muted. We saw oil go up to, to $86, $87 per barrel, which is kind of not very dramatic. Uh, the problem here is that there is a risk that this conflict drags out a bit. It's, it's a very complex situation and uh, it's not very likely that this will come to an end in, in the short term. Israel have to secure their security on, on, on the, the, the Gaza Strip and, and that obviously 
that probably implies that that this uh, military operation will continue for some period. It is difficult to to assess what this means for um, oil price because um, obviously Saudi is a very important player, and I don't see any reason for the Saudis to kind of um, uh, destabilize the market. But um, you could obviously see a risk that Iranian oil. Um, uh, um, the increase that we've seen on 700,000 uh, barrels a day um, is, is not reaching the market. So I think there is on, on balance um, a risk that, that this could mean uh, a little bit more of an upside on the oil price. OK, and um, lastly, we have uh, Q3. We've uh, come with the earnings reports for the for the quarter and the season has started. So uh, maybe looking ahead a little bit, your expectations for that. Well, we're we're getting JP Morgan later today and, and some of the other US banks. It, it will take another one or two weeks until we see the full tech, tech sector reporting. Um, if you look at expectations, they are actually fairly optimistic. Um, the, the, the consensus view is that we will have flattish earnings per share growth, but if you exclude oil and energy, you probably will see an increase of some four or five percent. Uh, there are a number of, of companies, uh, particularly in the tech sector, that, that has seemed to be did very well in, in the last quarterly report. Um, Amazon and Meta are two examples. Uh, and let's remember that the Q2 was actually um, a fairly strong reporting season. We have seen uh, very few profit warnings ahead of this quarterly report, so it, it could imply that the market will get a bit of support from from uh, um, uh, the, the reporting season. Um, I would think that um, a bit of kind of important factors is this scenario with higher interest rates. So you want to see um, companies that are more resilient to, to, to higher interest rates. Uh, you want to own companies that are slightly less exposed to oil and obviously companies that are less exposed to the, the Chinese, US, Euro European geopolitical tension. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very important to kind of take a, a selective view on the stock market. I, I still think that the stock market is is kind of in, in a situation where fairly strong earnings growth 24 and 25 will will support a bit, provide a bit support. But for a more extended um, stock market rally, we really need to see the risk free rate come down a bit uh, and, and that will probably take a bit of time. So October, November, December tends to be better month in the stock market. But I do think that the, the valuation is kind of um, a bit on the high side, particularly if you look at the US. So we, we would, it would be very, very nice if we could see some strong reports, um, a bit of lower interest rates and resilient demand. That that would be a scenario where the stock market could, could do better. Um, so the reporting season will obviously be very important. And in, in general, I think it will be interesting to see if the optimistic expectations really pans out. We'll be watching that closely. OK, great. Thank you very much for today. Thank you very much.